think you're too advanced for the basics? Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> well, if your training has stalled out in certain lifts or skills, or if you've been feeling mentally checked out, basics are a beautiful thing. Back to basics. Today, I'm gonna show you how a beginner's mind can uncover a whole new love for training and also help you make more progress in the gym. Let's take the goblet squat. When I've trained beginners in the past, I've had them do a goblet squat test before we ever broke out the barbell. It was to make sure that they could do 20 reps at a 2-0 X1 tempo with at least one third of their body weight. I wanted to see that they had this basic strength capacity in one of the most simple squat exercises we have before we added complexity with barbells. Now, some people wanted to rush past this and get that barbell to feel like a real lifter. But building up that strength and stability is still highly impactful, even at advanced levels. Because with a movement like the goblet squat, you are capable of getting into deeper and more comfortable squat positions that extend your range of motion. Especially if you choose the cyclist squat variation. You will get extremely deep ranges of motion and be able to target more of your quads. Here are some details to pay attention to with the goblet squat, especially if you're training for aesthetics. Use the cyclist position or a basic heel lift to help you stay very vertical and drive your knees out over your toes. Get as low as you possibly can and don't load up heavier until you can confidently get your butt down to your heels. Slow the eccentric down and really move slowly to the bottom of the squat. Pause there for a brief second before driving up fast. If you have perfectly balanced strength and mobility in both legs, you are truly one of a kind. But because you've never seen someone's one rep max on a split squat on Instagram, people tend to shrug off unilateral work and not include it as their primary focus. They either skip it altogether or consider it only accessory. That's a shame because when you pay attention to the details, this movement can teach you a ton about where you compensate when things get tough. Here are the details to pay attention to, especially from side to side. The goal for this movement is to work towards getting a full knee bend in the forward leg. You know this is accomplished when you can get the hamstring to fully cover the calf muscle. Note if one side is more restricted than the other. Additionally, we are striving for the ability to perform this split squat with a straight back leg and with the torso upright. This is going to place a big stretch on the back leg, specifically on the hip flexor. You may notice one side is tighter than the other, and it might even cause you to rotate your hips slightly on your repetitions. Now, how do small adjustments like front foot elevation change the movement? Well, the height of the front foot is going to depend on your range of motion. Higher boxes are great for those of you who have limited mobility in the ankle or the rear leg hip flexor. A lower box is going to challenge those of you with better mobility. Also, where you hold the weight can make a huge difference. A suitcase, a goblet, or even a hand-supported variation can all play a role in how well you can hold your posture. I like whatever variation allows you to stay very upright. With a more upright posture, you will train great flexibility, mobility, and the back leg hip flexor will get that deep stretch. Spend a few moments watching gym videos on social media and you will see a wild amount of variety on how people move. There's a lot of stuff you'll see that might make you go, wow, that's pretty cool. But I'd argue that there is nothing quite as beautiful as a well-executed pull-up. When people rush through their range of motion or compensate in different ways, they miss out on the serious strength gains that also affect smaller muscles and joints further down the chain in this movement. Here's how to unlock a powerful pull-up. Let's focus on grip first. Get the knuckles on top of the bar and wrap your thumb all the way around. Next, think about leaning back slightly and pulling from the shoulders first. Keep your legs tight together and your abs tight too, and your body will raise up in one stiff board. This is going to put the primary stress on the upper back and not your elbows and biceps. Lastly, focus on driving the elbows down and back. Don't get focused on getting your chin over the bar. The end of the range of motion is when you can't drive your elbows down any further. Forget about trying to get your neck to stick out so that your chin touches the bar. And finally, consider using a band as an easier option to help you develop your perfect pull-up technique. 
Just like with the pull-up, the side plank also impacts the shoulder and more directly, the core. And how often do you do planks these days in your training? Isometric holds like the plank are terrific for training around injuries and getting blood flow to impacted areas, not to mention strengthening your lateral core. Here are the details of the side plank to become more aware of. Make sure your shoulder is stacked directly on top of your elbow. Don't hunch forward with your posture. Attempt to make the biggest gap between your lower hip and the floor possible. That means pushing yourself away from the floor hard throughout the side plank. A little homework for you. Break out the phone and film yourself doing a set of push-ups. Again, you won't see this often on Instagram, but filming the less fancy movements will show you a ton of things to work on. First, are you reaching your full range of motion? Second, are you loading up your shoulders, chest, and triceps correctly? Here's how I'd recommend practicing your push-up and a few key points to look out for. First, use a set of plates or parallettes. This will allow you to train a full stretch at the bottom of the push-up on your shoulders and on your chest. Second, when you're practicing your fundamental push-up, slow the whole movement on the way down. At the top, I want you to perform what is often called a scapular push-up. Basically, extend the range of motion at the top as far as you possibly can. Use this movement to learn how to push even with a rotating shoulder blade, not a fixed shoulder blade position. Third, keep your forearms vertical. For most people, this means letting your shoulders move slightly forward as you lower to the bottom of each and every rep. What happens when we don't refine the basics? We compensate and develop bad habits under heavier loads. This happened to me with my deadlifting years ago. I was so eager to build a heavy deadlift to keep up with my competitors. I kept pushing my weights without a solid understanding of good mechanics for this movement. I just took one coaching cue and ran way too far with it. The arched back cue caused me to deadlift with an overextended position for a long period of time. I lost power, strength, and ultimately kept suffering small injuries as a result. So let's slow down and check these points of performance for the basic barbell RDL, which is a perfect movement to build off of for all hinging exercises. First up, let's learn the top-down RDL. This means loading up the spine at the top of the exercise rather than at the bottom. You can take the barbell off of a bench or you can just set up your squat rack and pull the bar out at about thigh height. Second, once you have the load in your hand, learn how to brace your midsection. A strong contraction while you are standing will get you your low back into a neutral position. Third, start to hinge by pushing your hips back, not by rounding your shoulders forward. And fourth, lower slowly find the range of motion at which you can still maintain your strong core position and neutral spine and get a dramatic stretch in your hamstrings or the back of your legs. Don't sacrifice that back position by either rounding or overarching like I used to do. Keep your foot flat on the floor. Rocking back to your heels is not ideal either. And finally, try to keep your neck neutral too. Keep your eyes gazing on the floor about four to six feet in front of you and just think about keeping your chin tucked down. Have you ever tried a new movement in training and it did not go how you expected? I have seen athletes quit on the spot when they are humbled by how hard something felt when they weren't expecting it. Frustration is normal in training and it's actually a huge opportunity. If you lean into the discomfort, there is always something valuable you can learn. Whether you're new to this movement or you've done it a thousand times, Let's see what we can notice and uncover with just an empty bar or a little added resistance. First, the setup. Take a half kneeling position. Your legs are at 90 degree angles on both hip and knee joints. The barbell should rest almost directly on your shoulder with your hand at the very end of the barbell. Then press at a slightly angled forward position from your torso, almost like an incline press and less like a strict press right overhead. When you begin to reach that full range of motion of your press, continue pressing through the shoulder and let the shoulder blade move freely and rotate upwards. Similar to the scapular push-up we talked about earlier, 
you're performing a scapular press at the end of this range of motion. Combine that scapular press with a slight lean forward of your torso to get the arm, shoulder, and head all in alignment. The beauty of this movement is that it will teach us how to press with a moving shoulder blade at the top. Many exercises for pressing, like the bench press, are taught with a fixed shoulder blade. I've found that exercises that allow for shoulder blade movement, like this, have a great benefit to shoulder health for me and many clients. I hope you found value in revisiting these basics with me, and I invite you to submit your form review videos if you're in the Persist program. We take movements just like these and feature a handful of them in each and every training cycle so you can get personalized feedback on your movement from our expert coaches. What can you stand to learn from filming yourself and having a coach give you some pointers? It could open a whole new door to your training. Go ahead, visit the link in the description below. Try Persist for two weeks free. You can experience form reviews and everything else that the training has to offer. I'll see you next time.